Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the reading of your word in the church. Thank you for the opportunity again to hear from you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you do your work, O oh Lord, in our midst. That is, speak through me, fill me with your Holy Ghost. Let me not speak of myself. But help your words not fall on deaf ears. But let us not just only be hearers, but, and, but doers of your word also. In Jesus' name I've prayed. All right. Um, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I read verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. My topic this morning is, I am the good shepherd. And for those of you that know, uh, I've been going through the series, I am series. And this is going to be the last one. The I am series is a series talking about all the times Jesus said, I am in the Gospels. That's that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So, I mean, all the times I chose. Yeah, Jesus said, I am a whole lot more times. I just picked a few ones of them that I wanted to talk about. And this is the last of them. And we'll be moving on to other things after this series. So, the last one, I am the good shepherd. So, Jesus is the good shepherd. I could finish the sermon right there. You know, that's it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Jesus is the good shepherd. So, what does good mean? I've preached on good before. But good means something that truthfully and wholly benefits others. So, if... If you have a bucket of water, a cup of water and it's pure water and you add dirt in it, it is no more pure water. It's still water. It's better than water that many people are drinking around the world because people are drinking dirty water. Like, it's not pure. It's not clean. But that water still benefits many people, but it does not wholly benefit many people. Right? It does not wholly benefit. So that thing is not good. As simple as that. Because it is not perfectly pure. So... When God created everything, it was good. God saw everything and it was good. God saw everything. So that's what good means. I don't want to preach on good or, you know, preach on good again. But understand this. Good comes from God alone. Only God is good. Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 17, Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So everything that is good comes from God. And I don't want to get into, okay, how about good, better, best. That's why in the Bible, they say God is good. God is not better, because none can be compared with him, actually, if you're going to good, better, best. But good can be used as an adjective. So this is good. Oh, this is better. Then they say, oh, this is bad. But in the Bible, mostly when the Bible is using good, it's talking about good and evil. Not good and bad, as by adjectives. It's talking about good and evil. This is good and this is evil. Evil is what brings harm. Good is what brings, you know, what you say good. But what benefits you, uh, what truthfully and wholly benefits you. So I could just say, easy, good is what brings good. Evil is what brings harm. But you know what I mean by good. So you can look at that sermon. I, I preach about it in the past. But that's what good means. Now, what is shepherd? I could spin this, in, I will not say a million ways, because I say a million means, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. But I could spin this a whole lot of ways in different sermons, just shepherd, just preaching on, a sh on shepherd. Let, let me give you a f just a few things that came into my mind uh, when I was writing this. First of all, Abel was a shepherd. So you can teach that, you know, that could be a sermon in zone. Seth generation was shepherds. You know, the patriarchs were shepherds. Joseph told the Israelites to say that they were shepherds when they were coming into Egypt. Why? Because the Egyptians did not like shepherds. They hated shepherds. Why? Because shepherds rear their gods. They worship calves. You know, cow, basically. So, uh, you can, that is a sermon on its own. A good number of the children of Israel had to be shepherds. Why? Because of sacrifices. You know, God required that they bring lambs and, you know, all the sacrifice requirements. They could not just say, oh, we're all vegetarians. And that does not work with God, you know. <laughs> so David, too, was a shepherd. I mean, that could be a sermon on his own. And the birth of Jesus, God announced to the shepherds that Jesus was born. That, that, I mean, then at the end, Jesus likened Peter to a shepherd. You know, he said, feed my flock. You know, so... I could, I could, as I said, I could teach on shepherds just, you know, that could be its, its own series. But let me just get some points out of, you know, what is a shepherd. You know, Jesus is, he said, I am the good shepherd. That's what we're talking about. So we know what good is. That means it is truthfully 
and hopefully, it truthfully and hopefully benefits others. Now, the shepherd. Um, Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. I think that should, that, that's a good uh, chapter in the Bible. Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Want there means lack. You know, uh, so I will not lack anything because the Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever." I believe this is a wonderful psalm, talking about shepherd, the duties of a shepherd, what a shepherd does in relation to his sheep. It's, it's so wonderful, uh, and it's clearly written by a true shepherd, which is God. <laughs> and using a shepherd to write it also, so, uh, which is David. David was a wonderful shepherd, and I'll talk about David a little bit. But briefly looking at this, I'm not going to take it verse by verse and go too deep in it. If not, we'll spend a whole hour talking about this. But the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What the sheep, everything the sheep needs, the sheep gets. The sheep does not lack anything. It has, I mean, it led me, uh, making me to lie down in green pastures. Where you're lying, I mean, food is everywhere. You're resting there. There's no lack. Then besides still waters, he restored my soul. He led me in paths of righteousness. I mean, apply this to the sheep. Apply so the right path. You know, uh, uh, follow God, seek righteousness, and his, uh, God is telling us to follow his own righteousness, not the path that we think is right. You know, the sheep might think, oh, I, I want to go this way, I want to go that way. No, but he led us to his own right path, and it's written in the Bible, it's written in the word of God. Why? For his name's sake. You know, it's not about, the, it's, oh, because of you're so wonderful. The Bible says don't boast in yourself, boast in the Lord. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So, the rod and the staff. Rod. What is rod used for? You know, correction. Anytime they say, oh, don't spare the rod. In fact, spare the rod, spoil the child. He's not saying, oh, the ruler that you used to measure stuff. No, he's saying, if you stop spanking. So, the spanking of the Lord... As the shepherd does to the sheep, the spanking of the Lord and the, why is the same stick that is the rod and staff. You know, it's not like oh, this is the rod and the shepherd brings another stick. Oh, this is the staff. No, it's the same stick uh, that he's using to control the sheep. So when the sheep is going astray, he spanks the sheep, and that same staff is when he pushes the sheep. I said sheep. The sheep. You know, the right way. You know, he's leading the sheep. He's like, oh yeah, you guys go this way. You're going. To you know, you go this way. The same rod. And all that summarizes onto what? Comfort. Summarizes onto comfort. You need the rod to spank you so you can be comfortable. You see, the children that are not spanked are the ones that just run around in Walmart. Ah! Ah! You're trying to hold them. Just, just look around. But the ones that are spanked, you say, stop. Because the rod... And, and look at those children. The ones that are spanked are very comfortable. They enjoy their life. They like their parents. They like how their home. They like everything. They are, they are so they, they enjoy. They are comforted. But the ones that are just spoiled, turn around. Oh, I don't want to stay home. I'm, I, I, I do you like it. Oh no, I'm, I'm just. Uh, they are not comfortable. The ones that are anyway. As I said, I can stay all day here. So thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I mean, just think about the sheep. The sheep is out there in the wild, you know. The, the shepherd is shepherding the sheep, protecting the sheep. All the wolves are there watching. You know, the sheep smells, you know that, right? The wolves know where the sheep are. But because of the shepherd is there, the wolf is just watching the sheep. The food is set up in the presence of his enemy, you know. All the pastures are there. See, the wild beasts are not fools. How do they survive? They, the lions, they go to hunt where, because lions stay in the savannah, you know. So where there's water, they go to hunt because they know that's where the deer is going to come. <laughs> so they know where the good food is for their own prey. That's how the wolves know where the sheep are. They go where the sheep go and eat. 
So in the presence of the enemies, in presence of all the wolves, because they are hiding, you might not see them, the table is set and you're eating. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Talking about salvation, eternal life. So, let me move on. No man can do what Jesus did for us. No man. We are the people of this passion. When I say what Jesus did for us, we're talking about salvation, dying for our sins. Remember, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. That's the first uh, uh, verse uh, time he mentioned, I'm the good shepherd. So, we are the people of his pasture. Bible says in Psalm 100 verse 3, I'll read it, down to open there. Psalm 100 verse 3, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. So, God, the Bible is telling us, it's not us that made ourselves. He said, well, no one thinks we made ourselves. First of all, some people think that, oh, I'm the one that gave birth to you. I made you. I can destroy you. Have you heard somebody say that? <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, people are walk. See, I'm the one that set you up. I can destroy you. No, it's God that raises. God that lifted, uh, brought people, brings people low. Everything it is God. Now, apart from that, when science tells you, oh, Big Bang, well, exploded and everything came. That means we made ourselves. Because we are part of the things that exploded. <laughs> so, and we're the part of the things that made everything. So, we made ourselves. That's what they're saying indirectly. They might not even know what they're saying, but that's what they're saying. Because the same thing that exploded is part of us. So, we didn't make ourselves. It is God that made us. And we are the people of his pasture. That means we are his sheep. A shepherd that has no sheep is no shepherd. Just as a king without a kingdom, without subject, is no king. A guy can go, I'm king. King of what? <laughs> You're not king, you're just a mere man. In Psalm 95, verse 7, the Bible says the same thing. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if we will hear his voice, it goes on and on. In that verse, so he says, we are the people of his pasture. In case you didn't get that, you are sheep. You are the sheep of his hand. Obviously, he's talking about parables. He's not saying you are beast or wild beast. So, but we are likened to sheep as God, as Jesus is likened to a shepherd. See, another word for shepherd is pastor. Pastor is literally, the, it's the same word. It's Latin. You know, pastor is gotten, shepherd is gotten from the Latin word, the pastor. So, that, that's where we get the word from. So, um, me here as the pastor, I am not the good shepherd. Amen? Now, I don't say, oh yeah, pastor is kind of liking himself to Jesus. No, I'm not a good shepherd. I am sheep. <laughs> We're all flock here. Jesus is the good shepherd. Open to Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. What I am is like the deputy or the under shepherd, as many will call it. Because the Bible talks about when the chief shepherd appears. Uh, look at uh, what the Bible says. First, first of all, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. Open to Isaiah 56. I'll read this for you. 1 Peter 2, 25. It says, For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd, the bishop of your souls. You see, when you got saved, you returned unto the shepherd, the bishop of your souls. Jesus was saying, Oh, there are other sheep of this fold that are mine that we need to go get. I need to go get those sheep. So when you get saved, you return unto the bishop, the, the true shepherd of your souls. In same First Peter chapter five verse four, the Bible says, "And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away." So he's talking to the pastors in that passage, saying, "When the chief shepherd, shepherd appears, so you, we have a job. We that are pastors here in church." Uh, in the New Testament church, uh, even in the Old Testament church, there are pastors, people that God gave. Uh, orders and um, authority to lead the sheep, to uh, feed the flock, basically, as Jesus would say. So, pastors are likened to watchmen. In fact, you say, wait, 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 you want to say this? Watchdog? Yeah, the Bible actually calls pastors watchdogs. So, dogs had a use. Now, you say, oh, but that's the same dog used as a sodomite. Same dog, but it is watchdog. Don't mistake parables. Parables is not exact. You know, when a parable is saying something, use it for its meaning. Don't say, oh, since he called pastor a dog, therefore all pastors are sodomites because he called sodomites a dog. You see, that's how if you don't know how to use a parable, then it will harm you instead of helping you. And the Bible says a fool 
uh, a parable in the hands of a fool is like thorns in the hand of a man. It, it tears up his skin like you hurt yourself. So, uh, but let me read what the Bible says. In Isaiah 56, I'll read from verse 9. The Bible says, All ye beasts of the field come to devour, ye, ye sorry, yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. So what is God saying? I, I'll read, give you the context. God is talking about Israel. Hey, Israel, they've lost all their shepherds. Israel, no more watchmen, no watchdog. So the beasts of the field, the wolves, you know, come and devour Israel, you know, because there's no man that judges. There's no one that doeth righteousness. There's no one that doeth justice. You, all my people, they, no pastor, nobody feeding the flock, nobody protecting the flock. So... What's going to happen? So God is calling uh, uh, with dark saints. All ye beasts of the field, come to devour. Yea, all the beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. That means they don't even know the word of God. They are all dumb dogs. That's the watchmen. They are all dumb dogs. What, can they, what can't they do? They cannot back. You know, I'm supposed to be backing. Hey, you know. Stop singing! Do this right! Go! Yeah. Shout! Make your voice aloud! Shout as a trumpet! Show my people their transgression and the sons of Jacob their iniquities, their sins. You know, I'm supposed to be barking! I'm just telling you, watch out for this! Watch out for that! But the watchmen, they, are, they cannot bark. They are sleeping. They are lying down, loving to slumber. That's what the Bible says. Verse 11. Yeah, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain from his quarter. So this is your quarter. Where is my quarter? The church. I'm looking for... As, no, um, but the prophets then, in their own quarter, they are looking for their own gain. How am I going to make money off of all these people? Hey, how am I going to, you know, they, I'm, I'm sleeping. I'm not watching. I'm not sh barking. I'm not warning the people. I'm not warning the flock. I'm not telling them about false prophets. I'm not telling them about false doctrines. I'm, I'm just keeping quiet about sin. So, that's what God calls. But he says they are shepherds. You see, call them dogs. Call them shepherds. These are all you know, different words to use for what the job of a prophet. Amen? All right. And I just thought about this. When you're out in the wild, having big, what do they call those things? A camp. When you're camping, uh, colleagues of mine, they camp. I've never camped before. In the wild. <laughs> like literally, they go in the wild and the wild animal can attack them. They know about it. And somehow they're fine with it. So when you're out in the wild, you're supposed, you're supposed to put on light because light drives away the wild animals. Can you imagine? Is God not wonderful? When you have, like, when they're about to sleep, they put a light next to their camp. You know, a little bit away from their tent, obviously. So that animals don't come sniffing. Bear, wolves, don't come sniffing around because the food is smelling, all those things smell. But light drives away the wild beasts. You see, the shepherds, they don't have light. The light See, God is the light. I am the light of men, and the light is the life of men. That's what Jesus said. So, they don't have the word of God. The light is the word of God. And they are not teaching the word of God. So, therefore, the wild beasts come and devour the sheep. So, when the, the prophet is supposed to be shining the light, shining the light, and make sure the wild beasts don't come in. So, I just want to point that out. So, to better understand the shepherd, we need to understand sheep. How, to understand what the shepherd's job of a shepherd, all the things that shepherd is doing, let's learn a little bit about the sheep. Uh, sheep, uh, from this uh, sermon study, I've decided I'll preach on sheep, you know, in the future and focus more on sheep because sheep has a whole lot of things to talk about. I don't want to focus so much on the sheep. Just a few things from the sheep. Sheep are meek, they are quiet and gentle. That, that's who sheep are. In a herd, they tend to listen to their, elder, uh, sorry, their elders, to their leaders, and very obedient. So when you get sheep in a herd, they tend to listen. You know, they follow one another. One starts running, all of them just leave, and they all start running. And once you get one, and you're following one, they all tend to herd up, and they follow each other. If they all turn, the one at the back does not see the danger in front. Everybody just turns. <laughs> you know, everybody just keeps going where they all go to. So they're very obedient in that way. And um, I believe God made sheep that way, especially to describe the sacrifice of what Jesus did. 
you know, uh, a sheep quiet, meek, gentle, and uh, they, 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 uh, not complaining, you just do what the master says, that kind of thing. And also, God made sheep that way to display who we are in respect to God, you know, a shepherd and a sheep, sheep so powerless. And, and guess what? I said I don't want to talk too much about sheep, but something about sheep, when a sheep gets too fat, and the wool of his hair, if you don't share the sheep, you know what sharing, that is cutting the wool of his, of his skin. If you, if you don't de-wool it or share the, I said the wool, if you don't share the sheep and the wool is so big and the sheep is so fat, if that sheep falls, do you know it cannot stand back up by itself? It needs somebody to turn it and stand it up. That's an amazing thing about sheep. You see why you, you should not want to be too rich, too fat <laughs> in the Lord? Now, I'm talking about spiritually. Because when the sheep falls and he does not remove the wool, there's nothing wrong. See, the wool is good for the sheep, obviously, but too much of it is not good. But it's comfortable. Now, he cannot walk very well. All this is about sheep. I'm, I, we could go, I could, as I said, study about sheep. I don't want to go into it. I'll show you all the spiritual connotations about it. But, so the shepherd's job is to make sure the sheep is not too fat. And to make sure he remove cuts off the wool. That is the job of the shepherd. So the sheep is going to keep walking up and down, exercising the sheep, and find out the ones that are not walking fast enough. The one that's the job of the shepherd. And he has to make sure he shares the sheep. So the, the shepherd has a lot of work to do. And the shepherd also has to provide life necessities for the sheep. Talked about that. So to focus on what Jesus is talking about here in uh, ch John chapter 10. So that's about sheep. And Jesus said he is the shepherd. So let's focus on John chapter 10. Because I've gone everywhere just talking about good shepherd, sheep. First off, I want to point out the sheep hears the voice of the shepherd. The sheep hears the voice of the shepherd. The words of God are spoken words. It is the voice of God. So God's word is the voice of God. So he said the sheep hears the voice of a shepherd. He's talking about hearing the word of God. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, I'll read it. 2 Peter 1, 21, the Bible says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men spake. Sorry, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So it is words. See, this Bible is its voice. More than, you know, you seeing this writing. It is voice. What do I mean? You know, some people get hung up on the fact that, oh, it says spirit with small s. Or it says God with small g. Or it says he. You know, when it's talking about the Lord. Or it's talking about, you know, Jesus and they say he was. Oh, you see the he is small h. That does not mean anything if somebody was speaking. If Jesus, if God is speaking and say He was going, did He say capital He was going? No, He just said He. Now the person writing it down is like, okay, I'll just be a capital because I think it's a capital. Oh, I, I, you know, give it a small s. But think about the what the, the the God's words as by Him talking, because that's how the words of God came with speech. Nobody in their brain just you know private interpretation. Oh, I'm just going to figure this out. No. It was words coming out as someone was writing it down. So don't get too hung up on capital H, capital S, because I'll tell you, if you've read your Bible very well, and you've been reading your Bible over and over and over again, different Bibles, you see different things, uh, uh, like typographical errors about capital S or this, in different Bibles, same King James. So people say, oh, you see, it's just typos. You know, it always happens. In Romans chapter 16, verse 22, uh, look at what happens because the book of Romans. Who wrote Romans? Sorry, it's not rhetorical. If you know, just shout. Paul. Paul wrote Romans. Right. Okay, so let's read what the Bible says. Romans 16, verse 22. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Whoa! Who wrote Romans? I thought he says it was Paul. I thought it was Paul that wrote Romans in the beginning. You know, Paul was writing. No, no, no. The Bible says Tertius wrote Romans. That's how stupid it is to say, oh, Jeremiah is the one that wrote Jeremiah. Do you know what Tertius was to Paul? That's exactly what Paul was to God. Tertius was a pen. Period. 
Who wrote this Bible? If you say it is men that wrote this Bible, I'll tell you, no. This is not their handwriting. It's a printer that wrote this Bible. With your logic. It's a printer. Let's read what the printer said. See how dumb it is? Here's what happens. Paul is speaking and Tertius is writing. As simple as that. Tertius is the one that penned down what Paul said. And you, nobody says Tertius wrote the, No one even knows about Tertius. <laughs> but I'll tell you one fact. I'm sure 90% of us, this is the first time we're hearing Tertius. And we've read Romans before. <laughs> but Tertius is the one that literally penned it down. Um, a book, is it the Galatians? Or Th Thessalonians? I can't remember. Was written by about three people, Paul, all of them, they all wrote it. So it says, me, this, is right, we salute you. So, but the point is, it's Paul that wrote it. You see what I mean? So God is speaking, and somebody's writing it down. And you say, oh, it's the person that wrote it. You know, man makes me... No, 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 it's God that wrote it. Amen? I'll give you more proof. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. What I'm talking about here is the sheep hears the voice of God and the word of God is the voice of God. And that's why the preaching of the word is powerful. It might be foolish to other people that God will win souls by preaching of the word. But he wants the word preached. I don't know you going to write a book. You know, oh, this pastor wrote the book. No, listen to my preaching. That's my book. Amen? If I want to write a book, I write about cooking. I write about something else. Driving a car. I don't care. But if it's about the word of God, I will prefer to preach it and preach it to the end. Hear the words of God. You know? The reading of the Bible and the hearing of the Bible. Not the hearing of spiritual books. Or the reading of spiritual books. And when I say spiritual, I talk about what all these pastors write. And I'm not saying it's wrong to read a book or write a book. Don't get me wrong. Probably when I'm like 115 or something, I decide, you know, I'm tired of talking, maybe I should write a book or something. But it's not that it's wrong. But before you start dwelling on books and everything, do you know the Bible very well? Because you're supposed to use the Bible to judge the book. That's why it's good to hear the preaching of the word under the, 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 uh, the Holy Ghost and to read the Bible itself straight from the horse's mouth, as they'll say, proverbially. All right, Exodus 15, verse 26, the Bible says, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to what? To the voice of the Lord thy God. He didn't say, oh, you know, God is trying to make it clear that it's God's voice you should hearken to, which is the words of God. Obviously, somebody wrote it down. But if thou should diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, because Moses knows that I didn't write this stuff up, I didn't make it up, I heard God and I wrote it down. So hearken to the voice of God. You see what Moses is telling them? And will do that which is right in his, in his sight. Not right in your sight. But there's a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof is destruction. And that verse is the end thereof is death. So, um, and do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear to his commandments. And keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healed thee. All right, look at Deuteronomy 1, verse 34. Deuteronomy 1, 34. The Bible says, And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wrought and swear, saying. So the people were, people were talking, people were complaining. Moses was telling them, telling the new generation what the old generation did. Right? So Moses said, this is what God heard. God did not read your words. He heard the voice of your words. I'm trying to say when the Bible says, The sheep heareth my voice. He's talking about the things that you're saying. He's talking about the word of God. Your words are your voice. You see what I mean? So when I'm preaching the word of God, I'm preaching the voice of God. Still, Deuteronomy, look at chapter 4, verse uh, 12. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. You might as well put Deuteronomy because we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 5 too. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire, so the Lord spake. Moses is saying, the Lord spake unto you guys. See, he's talking to the children of the people at first. You have to understand Deuteronomy. This is second laws. So this is the next generation. That former generation have all died off. You know, 40 years have passed. The former generation has all died off. Moses is about to die. After this, Moses goes to die. <laughs> so it's like a few, I don't know, months or weeks before Moses dies. So he's telling this new generation, these young souls that are 25, I don't know, 22-year-old men. Ready to go and fight. So he's telling them, hey, you guys were, maybe some are 40, I don't know. You guys were children. You guys were below 20 when you heard God speak. So they heard it. Their parents heard it too. 
So they heard it. So it says, And the Lord spake unto you, out of the midst of the fire, ye heard what? The voice of the words. Do you see that? The voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. So you have to understand that. So now, you ask me, Pastor, so why does God use prophets? Why can't God just speak? You know, I want to hear God's voice. I want God to speak to me. Uh, so first of all, um, God had been speaking to all of them. God wanted to speak to his people. But it's, it's detrimental to the people if God just speaks to them. Remember, God does not... When Isaiah saw the Lord, Oh, woe unto me, I'm, I'm, I'm dead, I'm gone, man. I'm a filthy, I'm a man of filthy lips. Even an angel appears to somebody, the person is like, oh, we're going to die. We're all dead. So can you imagine now God every time coming and speaking to people, everyone's just, we're dead, we're dead. I mean, it, that's just how it was. So why does God uh, not, why does God use prophets? Let me show you why he uses prophets. Deuteronomy chapter 5, here in Deuteronomy chapter 5, let me start from verse 1. This will tell you why God uses prophets. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The, Lo the Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. See, he's telling them what happened when they were kids. The Lord done with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. In, in Bible, verse 5, it says, I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord, for ye were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount, saying, so that was all that was in parentheses. So let me read from verse 4 and skip that. So God, what Moses is trying to say is, hey, when God was speaking, remember when God was speaking the Ten Commandments? It was not that God was whispering in Moses' ears. You have to understand, God was speaking from the clouds. They saw in the mountain, darkness covered the whole mountain. There was thunderings. There was everything, the cloud, darkness. And anytime God speaks, everything shakes. So, um, thou shalt not worship. They all heard it. But God told nobody should come up that mountain and save Moses. Joshua was at the bottom of the mountain. So, God was speaking. They all heard it. They all saw it. But Moses was right there in the mountain. Right? And God wrote it down on the stones and gave it to Moses. Before the next... Remember, Moses broke it. Then next time, God told Moses to write it down. Anyway, so God wrote it down and gave it to Moses. So that's what Moses said, that I stood in between. I was in between. But you all heard it. It's not like, oh, I came down with these stones. Hey, guys, this is what God told me. Like, did God really say that? You heard it. <laughs> it's all written now. You see what I mean? So, that, that's not, uh, Moses trying to say, I just stood in between. So, let's read from verse 4 and skip that. Moses saying, I stood in between. So, you can understand it. And the Lord talked with you face to face in the mountain, out of the midst of the fire, saying, I am the Lord thy God. So, God is the one speaking. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the Father upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will hold him guiltless that taketh his name in will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God had commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thy uh, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. 
And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt. And the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by, by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor. Okay, by the way, Moses was giving some interpretations. If you read Exodus chapter 20, it's a whole lot shorter. Moses was explaining. So I'm, I'm just speaking God's voice because it's still God speaking through him. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee that all that thy days may be prolonged and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou sh and neither shalt thou commit adultery, neither shalt thou steal, neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, or his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire. You see? So God, Moses, God spake all these words. They heard all these things. Remember, the question is, Pastor, why is God using prophets? So, because God was the one speaking. They were hearing God. If not, we all come to church and the cloud will just fill this place and God just start talking. <laughs> Everyone start shaking. Ooh. Anyway, but let's keep reading. God, uh, in the mouth of the midst of fire, of the cloud and of the thick darkness, and a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stones and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. So the older guys, the heads of the tribes, after they heard the voice, they went to Moses. They came unto him, hey Moses, I want, I want to talk with you one on one. So, look at verse 24. And he said, Behold, the Lord our God has shewed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that the Lord doth talk with man, and he liveth. You see, they were not sure. All this time, Moses parted the Red Sea. They are like, wow, this guy is just a wonderful dude. <laughs> you yeah? know? Oh, so Moses, what's going to happen? They are going to kill us. You see, he brought us out here to kill us. You didn't trust God. All this time, all the wonders of Egypt, they still didn't trust God. Until God spoke. Then they are like, oh, wow. That, that, that's not Moses. That's, that's God. We now know God live it. Because no idol speaks. All the golden calf does not speak. You know, all the things made by the works of hands doesn't speak. That is God. He lived it. So, they were sure. So, he said, and we, uh, okay, let me read again. We have seen this day that the Lord God, that God doth talk with man, and he live it. Verse 25. Now, therefore, why should we die? You see, they're already afraid. Why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. Remember, God says, I'm a consuming fire. So the belief, this fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, then we shall die. Why does God use prophets? Because of this. They, they just, I'm dead. Just kill me. You might as well just go ahead. You know, they just, because of how sinful we are when you hear the voice of God. So me talking is nice. And it's easy to say, oh, it's just pastor. He's just, ah, he's barking too much. God says, I bark. Hello? Stop! See, see, if you buy, back then, dogs were not pets. It's not, oh, come into my house. Come and sleep next to my bed. You know? Oh, his leg is broken. Let's go for surgery. $16,000. Pay for surgery. That's not what dog was for. If, if the dog does not, kill this thing, buy another dog that can bark. You know? Dog was for watch, watch dog, or help with the sheep, you know, watch dog and the sheep. When wolf comes, dog is barking, woo, woo, woo. So the shepherd is like, what's going on? Hey, the dog knows. See, if you buy a dog, you see, when a snake is there, when anything is there, I had a dog before, the dog will be barking, you know something is wrong. But if your dog just barks anyhow, just kill that dog, buy another dog, because it's useless, you know. But here in America, you know, they've changed the meaning of dog. You know, oh, don't, oh, it's just pet, you know, all of that. So, my point is, you need your dog to bark when you have a dog. You need it to bark. You're sleeping at night. Your dog is your ADT. ATD, ADT. You know, when somebody opens your door, ding, 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 call the cops, all that, that is dog. Because you're sleeping. 
the dog, once he hears something, woo, 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 everybody wakes up. That's why people don't enter people's houses at night. Because they all are dogs! <laughs> you know, our dogs hear everything. But now we've lost that function of dogs. And we don't understand what this means. So as a pastor, God is telling me I should bark. So stop saying, oh, you're shouting too much. Oh, hey, you can just bark by t- telling us softly. Which dog will be like, woof, no, you guys don't wake up too harsh. Woof, woof, woof. Woof, I don't want to disturb you, but I think I'm hearing something. <laughs> what do you care right now? <laughs> you don't know. Woof, 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 woof. You be, oh, man. You have to wake up by force. Nobody, nobody gets used to the vo- You know how you get used to alarm? You're like, this alarm is too soft. Dun, 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 dun. You just slip through the alarm. <laughs> if you can get used to the alarm, the alarm is useless, right? So if you get used to the dog barking, the dog is useless. So the day you say, you know what? I'm used to pastors barking. It doesn't affect me. I mean, you can be living the same and he's barking. Mm, doesn't affect me. I, I'm, I'm pretty much a bad alarm. <laughs> I'll tell you that I'm not a good watchman. So that's why I keep it dynamic, right? I give different kinds of barking. So you don't get used to it. <laughs> Anyway, let's keep reading here if I get carried away. Um, so now, therefore, we should die, right? Then we shall die. If we continue hearing the voice of God, we're going to die. Verse 26. For who is there of all flesh that had heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? They're like, who has heard that and lived? Go down here and hear all that the Lord, all that the Lord our God shall say and speak down unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. You, you, you be the one to go. <laughs> you know, Pastor, you, you can study, you can do, you, 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 just go. When we finish hearing, they come and tell us, we will hear. No, it's, it's okay. That's what they said. <laughs> you know? Okay, so. <laughs> and the Lord heard the voice of your words. You see, God heard them. Be careful of the prayer you ask for. God has heard the prayer. So God heard the voice of your words when he spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of these people which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, this is what God is saying. Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always. That it might be well with them and with their children forever. So they were so afraid of God. They said, we are sinners. I mean, we could die just listening to God. So, how about you go ahead, you know, hear of God, and come and tell us, we will hear. We were so, because we know we are sinners. You know, you, you're perfect, you know. Moses, just go, you're, you're a big guy, you know. You know how men talk, they flatter. You, you're perfect, you know. Yeah. So, basically, that's what they were saying. They are kind of enticing Moses. And Moses went, I mean, God, they don't want you to talk. God, he said, I've heard them. They've spoken well. I wish that that fear in them will continue in them always. So that they will fear me. Because they are fearing me now. They know that just with their sin and me talking, they can die. But afterwards, will they hear me? God knows at the end they will not hear. They will stop hearing the prophets. Believe God and thou shalt be established. Believe his prophets and thou shalt prosper. See, they will stop hearing his prophets. But they've spoken well. Because every time I talk, they all, they all run. They all, they... So this is why God uses prophets. Amen? So that's why the shepherd wants to talk to the sheep. You know, but the sheep don't want to hear. They are so afraid. So the shepherd calls one sheep, which is us, the pastor, which is us, the preacher. And say, okay, tell the sheep, you know, all of that. So that's what's pretty much going on. Obviously, that's not a parable. It doesn't apply that way. We're more like the watchdog and stuff. All those are parables trying to make you understand how God is using us. But my point is, I am one of the sheep too. We are all sheep. Amen. And we have the shepherd, the bishop of our souls. But God is using that medium because of who God is. And you think you're not going to say the same thing. Everybody say, oh, I want to hear God. I want to hear God. If you start hearing God, you'll be like, it's enough. Because you want to get a glimpse of what God says, read your Bible. Read your Bible. You'll be like, God, I mean, you hate this, you hate that. This abomination. We should, we should not live We should not do this. We should, we, I, I mean, so God, what should we do? We should just go out so we need, don't care about what we dress. I mean, that's what God will be saying. He has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when you actually... See, many people say, oh, this pastor is too harsh. All those people, if Jesus was their pastor, they all leave the church. You think Jesus is going to stand for nothing? Uh, rubbish? See, I don't even know what's going on within your lives. Jesus will just look at you. I know what you did yesterday. So let me tell you what you're thinking. That's wrong. 
Oh, I said this. You, no, no, no. What you are thinking is wrong. Jesus was doing it on earth. He will say something. They did not understand. Or they are thinking something. You say, you are wrong. What you are thinking, sir? That's wrong. That's not what I said. This is what I said. People just leave the church. They be like, this pastor is just... He's doing my best. <laughs> so, it is better. It is me. God is not revealing everything to me. I don't know what you are thinking. I don't think you might be thinking this guy is crazy. I don't even know what he's saying from this Bible. Jesus still uses the scriptures to explain himself. He's still going to use the same Bible to explain himself. So don't say, oh, if it's Jesus, the way he'll say it to be nice. Have you listened to what Jesus said? You brood of vipers! You, I mean, that's what Jesus is saying! <laughs> the same thing. So, it is nice. Understand this. It is nice that it's coming from me. It is it's nicer. It sounds a whole lot better coming from a man. So, understand that that is the man that is facing God. And all the heat is coming now. Yeah, I can take the heat too. You be like correct. Right? Oh, it's only you God is talking to. Is that not what they said at the end? After they finish coming to him and saying, you know, you be the one to go. Yeah, I mean, like just you go. Now all of a sudden, is it only you God is talking to? Is it only you that said it should be only you that God should talk to? Like that is the mentality of men. And that's how we all are to this day. After a while, if there's no war. People will be, oh, we don't need soldiers. We don't need men. Men and women are the same. Women can do what men can do. Once war starts, oh, we need men. Men, you go to war now. You're a man. You want us to now go to war? It's, it's just that's how human beings are. When you stay somewhere for too long, you, you, you just think that's how life is. You, everything just loses roles. So, um, uh, let me stop there about, you know, with the shepherds and stuff. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32 to 35. This is another uh, symbol of a good shepherd. That's David. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, that his servants will go and face this Philistine. Talking about Goliath. And Saul said, on, said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight him, for thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. That means David was a shepherd. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. What am I trying to say here? You can see something about the shepherd. Something we are supposed to do. I'm talking about pastors and stuff. We are supposed to do. My job is not to go out there and be fighting all the false prophets. You know, hey, that's the false prophet. Hey, let's, let's all go and fight him. There's a poster. That's not my job. Yeah, I mean, David did not go out there looking for, for bears and lions. You know, if there's a lion, he said, I'm going to kill all lions. You know? He said, there were lions out there. The lions came and took a sheep. Right? When they took one, then he went after that one. That's why I'm attacking the ones that are coming in here. The ones that we tend to listen to. The ones that are affecting us. Let's attack those ones. Because if it's about just going out to find all the wolves, then... That's another ministry on his own. <laughs> you know? I'm not going to be out there debating people. Hey, you know, God is right. Uh, you are wrong. No, no, no. This is the sheep, right? Then I come in. Then let's see the ones that affect us that I'm, I'm aware of. Amen? I'll attack those ones. And the ones that really affect us, like Pastor Adebo, keep attacking him. They keep affecting us because I know where we came from. I know where, who we listen to. T.D. Jakes, all those woofs that come. And so, you post on Facebook, T.D. Jakes said this, you know. Once I see that, I know who I'm attacking. You know, the ones that we tend to listen to. Anyway, so that is what David did. Any normal human being knows that a man stands no chance against a bear. The poor, I mean, a bear weighs what? A, a thousand, something, a thousand tons or something like that. Or one ton or something, I don't know. He's poor. Okay, let me not use tons. It's about 400 pounds or 600 pounds. A fully grown male adult bear, average, is about 12 feet, 9 feet tall when he stands. The weight of his paw coming, how many pounds, foot of force? I mean, what I'm trying to say, if you just any kind of science, and the bear will kill you, life and direct. Just one slap, paw scratching, you can take out your skin to the bone of your skull and break your neck with the force. One slap of a bear, hopefully it doesn't hit your head. On your chest, it can rip open and you see your heart. Because his claw is about three feet. Sorry, three inches. <laughs> three, feet. three inches. So it's like this claw. 
Just what? But this guy gives his life. Every time he went to face a bear or a lion, I don't even talk about a lion. You guys know about lions. <laughs> I mean, a lion is like 600 pounds. Just prowling. Just imagine if he jumps on you. Six, 600 pounds on you. And the teeth, four inches. <laughs> the cheek teeth, as the Bible says. Four inches. Anyway. So every time David, this young man, goes, young, he's not even a warrior, goes to fight, a, he has given his life. He's ready to die. And even me, I own a dog. His teeth is like one inch. His cheek teeth. I own a dog. That dog, I can slap him up, beat him up, everything. I used to own a dog, I mean. I can beat him up. See, when that dog is eating, I step back. He can bite me. Especially when he's hungry and he's eating. <laughs> That's dog. That he's, I'm the master. He knows that. Now imagine it. You know, lions, bears, they don't just hunt for fun. They are hungry. They have not eaten in a while. So they hunt, they get a lamb. They are, they've sunken their teeth in there and you're going to remove their food? That, that is like death wish. <laughs> so, but David, this is what he did. My point is, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. David showed you that example. So, why was David doing this? Out of reverence for his father. Is it that David said, you know, me and you sheep, I just love you people. <laughs> no, his father told him to watch this sheep. Right? So, David's like, I'm going to obey my father and I'm not going to lose one. Jesus said that. All the sheep you've given me, I've not lost one. So, uh, so my father gave me this sheep. I'm, and even David, in fact, I'm not going there. So, his father gave me this sheep. So, out of reverence for his father. Now, is he just obeying his father just out of the blues? You know, I'm just going to obey you. I don't care why. I'm just going to. No, he's obeying his father because of God. All our authorities in life come from God. The highest power. So God, children, why are you supposed to obey your parents? Because the Bible says so. Oh, but mommy, why did you Because you have to obey me. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says obey your parents. Why do you not do the things you do? If the government says, oh, don't do this, oh, why do you obey? Why do you pay your taxes? Oh, you just love Trump. You just, you know, let's just give Trump our money, right? No, because God says so. You don't want to live a peaceable life. That's the authority, the office of the president. God has ordained that office. Amen? Now, the person in there doesn't mean God ordained him <laughs> because they're putting kings that I know not of. Anyway, so um, God said so. We obey because that's what God said. So go David is obeying his father reverence because of God and keeping the sheep because of his father. So everything is boiled down to God. We obey our boss at work because of God. So he's a figure of Jesus of sorts. Jesus said, my father has already commanded me to come and die. My father has commanded me, this is the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. You know, all that, that's what Jesus said. So Jesus died for us to save us. Isaiah 53 verse 7. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Sorry, let me read again. Isaiah 53 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her sharers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. As I believe God made the sheep, the lamb, just to picture the death of Jesus. Picture Jesus in our, And he's the lamb. The Bible calls, calls him the lamb, even in the New Testament. So the good shepherd suffered the fate of the sheep. He's ready. He gives his life. Suffered the sheep. He died for us. Okay, the next point. The good shepherd knows his sheep. The good shepherd knows him. And this is another proof of eternal life. Because the Bible says in Matthew 7 verse 21, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. You see, oh, you have to do works to go to heaven. The will of his Father is that you believe the gospel. Anyway, in case you don't get, that's a sermon on its own. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. So my point is, no matter all the good works you have done, they are dead works. Because good works and dead works are the same works, just that one is done by a believer, 
and one has done by. So if you're doing those same things, activities, is the Holy Spirit there? It is dead. If the Holy Spirit is not dead, and then it is detrimental. But you're doing the same thing, sort of. I'm putting it's not exactly the same thing, but sort of. You are going to church, all that. It means nothing. You're not getting any reward. And, you sh- and even if you're, you're going to a living church and you're not saved, it's still nothing. That's what I'm saying. It's like doing the same thing. It's like doing the same thing. So, but what makes one good and one workers of iniquity is if you've obeyed the will of my father, which is being saved. So, God, and I say, oh, no, you didn't do those works. Or oh, uh, you fell short in this work. Nobody does anything perfectly. Who, who perfectly obeys God and everything? But that's not the problem with Jesus. The problem with Jesus is that I never knew you. But the Bible says the good shepherd knoweth his sheep. So, once at any time you can say, oh, God knows me because I'm the sheep of God, then he can never say, I never knew you. See, eternal life. He's talking about eternal life here. All right, the next point. The good shepherd is known of his sheep. The good shepherd is known of his sheep. Now that when someone is saved, it's hard for the person to just say, you know what, I don't even know who Jesus is. You know, I, I don't know what he did. Is he the son of God? That means the person was never saved. Amen? It's something, it's one thing to deny and say, oh, no, I don't think it's Jesus or, or I, I don't believe. But at least you believe in the Messiah. When they say you believe in the Christ, talk about the Messiah. That means somebody that, you know, you, you put all your trust in to be saved. So, just as a child knows his parents, that's how we that are born into the family of God will know God. And as the child grows, the more he knows his parents. As we grow in the Lord, the more we know God. And the child takes every moment... Uh, he seizes the opportunity to know and to grow, knowing his parents. That's how he seize every opportunity and every moment to grow. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul speaking, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. So just keep knowing him. It's just, you just continue knowing him. Even as great as Paul was, he was still knowing God. Just as no child say, oh, I completely know my parents. You know, you're eight years old. Trust me, you don't know, my, you don't know yet. And we are never... 20 years old or 21 years old with God. Get my point? We're always children of God. So don't say, oh, but when I'm 65, I probably know my parents very well and I'm taking care of my parents and helping them enter the car, driving for them and all of that. You know, when I'm 80 and my parents are still alive, I know, no, 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 when you're never 80 and God is never old, I can't walk. See my point? So understand the analogy. We're children of God. Always. (laughs) You know? Uh, Until we fully know him and we'll know more when we get to that point. So in conclusion... Uh, you can open back to John chapter 10. Basically, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The good shepherd knoweth his sheep and is known of his sheep. See, the, all the God is talking about is eternal life. You have to read through all that, but he's talking about eternal life. That's what John chapter 10 is focused on as a good shepherd. He's saying, I'm dying for you. You're always my sheep. I, you know, I'll lay my life down for you. You, you know, you will not perish, all of that. So it's all talking about eternal life. Look at verse 27, John chapter 10, verse 27. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Remember I said we're always children in the eyes of God. So if I take my son, should we come here? So I take my son, well, we are like this in the, in the hands of God, right? So now I'm holding you. Now leave me. Go. Try all your best. Use your power. All your best. Do you, I mean, we could do this forever. Do you think his will, he can come out of my hands? And God said nobody can pluck him out. So you can call another small Jidobi. I try and pluck him out. It does not work. You see my point? And I'm not even half as strong as God. And he's not even half as strong as... You get what I'm trying to say? Like, you can go... You see, he cannot. So people say, oh, what if I stop believing? I reject Jesus. I don't want to be in his hand anymore. It's too late. God cannot be a liar. It's too late because I've already held him. (laughs) He says, no man can pluck you. You, can, you cannot come out. You're a child. Unless you think you are like God. It's just like if I call Rewan, come out. He can get his hands out. He's an adult. He's a grown man. Right? So, if that's what you think you are to God, then you see your pride will not get you into the kingdom of God. You have to humble yourself and say, I'm a child when it comes to God. Not anything close to his strength, his power, anything. So, if God holds you, and Jesus said, I and my father are one. The same thing as Jesus holding you, he cannot lose you. Forever. 
you're going to be saved. You're going to heaven. It's talking about eternal life. Very interesting, though. People said Jesus had the devil. It's the same passage. You know, in John chapter 10, verse 20. And many of them said, he had a devil and is mad. Why hear, he, why hear ye him? You know, I've preached eternal life before. And people literally said, I have a devil. I mean, not... In the same words. But they say, oh, it's demonic. Oh, you know, I believe that is just demonic. Because I'm preaching eternal life. I'm trying to explain eternal life. They say, oh, what if the person rejects it? Or, you know, I preach that it's not by seeing. You can't reject it. They agree to the point. Oh, you know, what if the person rejects it? I, then Jesus is not a liar because you felt like rejecting me to prove him a liar? Like, it doesn't make sense. You believe the word of God. So, and literally, it says, I have a devil. Look at Matthew chapter 10. You can put to Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. I'll read from verse 24. Matthew 10, 24. The Bible says, The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is, eno it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. So you can only get to... Nobody is better than preaching in Jesus. You can only get to Jesus' height. But you cannot be better than preaching. That's, that's what Jesus is trying to say. And if you think you can get to his height, then I don't know what's in your head. But because he is the word. The Bible says his measure of the spirit was infinite. It was filled with the spirit without measure. Do you get? We were filled to the brim or something, you know. But him, they couldn't even measure it. Because he is literally the word of God. So, anyway. It's enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, that means devilish, that is the devil, how much more shall they call them of his household? So, you can read on. Fear them, fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and he that shall not be known. Uh, that shall not be known. Verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in, the li in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. What he tells, what God calls Moses in, into the tent, and tells Moses, hey Moses, this is what you're going to tell the people, you know, this, 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 this. Moses told him in darkness, uh, God told him in darkness, because the cloud came over, and God told him in his ear, God is telling Moses, go and shout it out to the people. And Moses did the same thing. All the other laws, you think Moses came up with it? No, God told him in the ear, because they were tired of hearing God speak. You think God wanted to just tell them ten laws? No, those are just the ten that God spoke. And he knew that what they were going to say. So God just paused. Now they spoke. If not, God has said all the laws, and they would have all heard it. You see that? But, so Jesus is doing the same thing with his disciples. So I've told you this in the air. I've told you in darkness. That's part, in secret. That's what darkness means. It's different from evil. Oh, the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. Understand Bible. I mean, exactly. So it's preaching house tops. Now if you're preaching something off of the house top, do you say you climb the house top and be like, Hey guys, guys, you know, I want to tell you guys something. Who is listening to you? Even the wind is just taking your phone. <laughs> you know, you guys shout, right? Hey, people, hear me. You, know? that, you see, throughout the whole Bible, God's telling you to shout. Preachers to shout. So, you know, we thank God for microphones. If not, my voice are finished. And fear them not, th that which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear them which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. You see, it's God that does that. So, the point I wanted to make here is, what, I'm, I wasn't surprised when I saw a person calling me, oh, that's devilish. If I say what I'm saying is devilish, that means what is talking through me, the devil, obviously. So they called Jesus Beelzebub, all because he was preaching, you know, eternal life. He was preaching about salvation, saying he's God. I'm saying the same thing, that he's the Christ, he's giving us eternal life. Oh, that's devilish. Do you see that? So it's not surprising. And I wasn't surprised. I wasn't offended because God is saying, I'm telling you this, are you being not offended? So I'm not offended. I'm just like, wow, this Bible is like, whoa. You know, you know, people with their pride and they just say anything. And I get scared, you know, when I hear stuff like that. I'm like, wow, this person really doesn't believe. And this is exactly what happened to Jesus. Because I'm preaching Jesus. I'm preaching the same word. Anyway, so that's the end of um, I Am series. Amen. <laughs> And most of it, you see, is from John, and the book of John is about salvation. So it's all about that. And I just wanted to show us who Jesus is, who God is in this series. And it's not like we're still not going to know more about God. We're still going to be learning more about God and growing in other sermon series and anyone that comes here to preach. 
So let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for opening our eyes to know you more and more. I pray that we'll have the same prayer that, uh, that uh, Paul had, that I may know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your sufferings, that we want to walk with you, we want to carry our cross, we want to know you more, we want to grow more in you. Daddy, I pray you open our eyes, oh Lord, to see all this in Jesus' name. We can't thank you enough for the gift of eternal life. We can't thank you enough because we know it's not about our works. There's nothing we can do to earn it. There's nothing we can do to keep it. It is just you and for your name's sake because you're not a liar. That is that hope we put in you. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So it is faith by grace through faith. So it is faith we're hoping for that eternal life. Uh, so we get that grace through that faith. Uh, Daddy, I pray, O oh Lord, that uh, you keep, make us rest assured in this so that we can grow on this foundation into greater and more mature things in this church. In Jesus' mighty name.